Hello and welcome to Part 4 of Let's Create a 2D Platformer in the Godot Game Engine. My name is Colin, and in this tutorial, not so mini series, we'll be creating this 2D platformer video game. In this game, you control the player on screen using keys on your keyboard. Of course, you can walk, run, jump, and fall. Of course, you can jump on and squash enemies. You can get hit by and hurt by enemies and lose lives. You can shoot fireballs and collect coins and collect keys to unlock doors. You can do wall jumps, all that great 2D platform game stuff. But in this tutorial, we're gonna focus on making our character look like he has different states or different animations. So we'll make our character walk and have a different look or pose when he's falling or in the air, or if he's just standing there, a crouching pose and a climbing up or down a ladder pose. These are all done by using what's called an animated sprite. This is a kind of node in Godot. And we're also gonna use this to make our character flip around if you're facing left or facing right, walking left or walking right. So of course, this is part four in this mini series on how to create a 2D platformer. If you have not seen parts one, two, or three, I'll put a link to this playlist with all my Godot 3 tutorials up on the screen right now. And of course, if you like this video or if you've done something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps me and my channel out. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Godot or in Blender or technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click on the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So this is our scene as it stands. We've got our little character. We've got a couple of ground floor objects, platforms. If I press the play scene button, well, my game or scene launches, my character falls. We've got gravity. If I press the space bar I can jump, the left and right arrow keys or A and D will make me move left and right so I can now jump around my level and hopefully land on platforms and of course if I fall off the edge of a platform, well if there's nothing else to stop me, I'll just keep falling forever. In order to make our character, our little guy, have different poses, I have to go into my character's scene because of course Steve, my character over here in my node tree, is just an instance of another scene. We're using a, another scene, our Steve character as an object, an instance, an object in this level. So to actually edit Steve, I'm going to click on the little clapboard icon here that takes me, it'll open up a second tab here. I've got level one and then just the Steve scene and I've got just three nodes in this scene. Of course, Steve's root node is a kinematic body 2D. That's the actual physics object. And of course, we have a sprite as a child of that physics object and a collision shape, which is this bluey colored kind of pill shape that gets hit by other objects or detects collisions for this object. So what I need to do now is actually change this sprite node into a different kind of node, an animated sprite. I could just press the plus button and add an animated sprite, but then I would have kind of two sprite objects. So what I'll do is I'll right click on my sprite node and I'll say change type. And yes, you can do that. So change type, it'll bring up a list of all of my nodes that I can change this to. I'm gonna type in sprite to the search box. So I'll select animated sprite and press change. When I do that, my sprite disappears because an animated sprite, which by the way, it's still called sprite. It changes the node type, but not the name, which might be a little bit confusing. But this is an animated sprite now. And animated sprites, if I look in my inspector doc, doesn't just have a texture kind of slot to put a picture in. By the way, if you don't have the whole collection in an assets folder of the player images, so if I expand the player folder, you can see I've got all my pictures here, which are PNG images, which are actually, if I go to my project folder right here, has an assets folder. And in that assets folder, I've got my player folder with all of these different PNG image sprites in the poses. When you import PNG pictures into Godot, you get a separate import file for each one. You have to leave those there. They're okay. So back into the Godot editor, this animated sprite object doesn't have a texture slot. It has a frame slot. Now what goes in here? Well, Godot has the ability to create its own resources. And one of those types of resources is an animation set. It's called a new sprite frames resource. So what I'll do is I'll click on the little arrow next to empty and select new sprite frames resource. It's made it for me. How do I edit this? Well, I'll just click on it. And what that'll do when I click on it is it'll open up the sprite frames doc on the bottom of the editor. If I make this a little bit taller, you'll see that there is a sidebar which lists animations. And there's already an animation made for us called default, but I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna name this animation idle. 
Now, in the large section of this doc is where you drag in image files that you want to make up the frames of this animation. Idle is just going to be one frame long. So what I'll do is drag in the platform char idle.png picture right there. And you'll see, I can actually see my character now if I pan up. So now I've got an idle pose for my character. Next up, I'm going to create a walk animation. So I'll press the new animation button. I'll double click and name it walk. You'll want to name these things that you can easily recall later on. So W-A-L-K. Uh, it's pretty easy. So now I will drag walk1.png and walk2.png in order. And so now they will actually play back like an animation flipping back and forth. You can change the frame rate or frames per second of this walk animation down here. It's set to five frames per second. I think that's okay. Let's go ahead now and make, I'll press the new animation button. I'll name this animation air. That's a short word, it's nice. This is for when your character's in the air, falling or jumping. We have a jump.png already for us. There we go. We need two more, so I'll press the new animation button. We need a crouch pose or animation, and that just has, again, one frame in it, one picture. It is called duck.png. There we go. And I need a climb ladder, so I'm going to call this climb. And I'll press enter and I'll drag climb one and climb two in order. So now we have all of our animations. But which one will be the one that actually shows up when we start our game? Is it going to show air or climb or crouch or idle or walk? We can decide that. I think I will decide on idle. So I'm going to go over and select the animated sprite called sprite. And then in the properties of it, in its inspector, I'm going to select the animation idle right here as the default. I also want to check playing because I think that's required in order for any of your animations to actually play their animation and not just show their first frame. And before I move on, we have a sprite frames resource that we've now created and spent some time adding all our pictures to, but it's not saved. Now, technically this sprite frames resource doesn't need to be saved as a file, but it's a good idea to do that. So I'm going to click on this little arrow and select uh, save, of course, and I'm going to name this new sprite frames. Uh, I'll change it to maybe uh, Steve sprite frames. So it's pretty obvious and I'll press save. If you ever go back and edit any of the frames or make more animations in this resource, you'll want to go back and save over your old copy, okay? Actually having a sprite frames resource saved into your project folder means that you could theoretically create a new set of sprite frames or a new sprite frames resource with a different version or skin or color of your character with all of its own animations. So if your character upgrades himself to wear a different costume or something like that, you could access this frames resource and give it a different resource with code in your game. If you want to say, have your character wear a different hat or change their outfit, that's how you would do that. But let's go ahead and save this scene. I'll press control S on my keyboard to save. I'll go back to level one. Let's press the play scene button to see what's going on here. My character doesn't do any of his animations except for our default idle. So now we have to code the switching between the different poses or animations. So I'm going to, in level one, select Steve and click on his little code icon to bring up his GD script right here. So what I'm gonna do is if the player presses the right arrow key or the right action, which could be D or the right arrow key, and we make our character move to the right or change its velocity, we're also gonna to need to access Steve's animated sprite and tell it which animation that it has to play. This introduces a new symbol into your GD script. I'm gonna press enter because we want, when we press right for two things to happen, make sure your cursor is lined up with the beginning of velocity. The character is a dollar sign and we use a dollar sign to access other nodes in our node tree because if I want to say change Steve's sprite or actually access the sprite and play one of its animations, well, I have to actually name that animated sprite in my code. But when I type a dollar sign, it lists for me this Steve character's children. And that's okay, because I want to access one of Steve's children. In fact, his sprite, and it's right here. So I'll just type sprite with a capital S. That's how it's named over in Steve's scene. Sprite. 
And now we have access to anything that this sprite can do, including play one of its animations. So if I type a dot, I get access to any of this sprite's properties or any of its methods that it's capable of doing. It has a method in it called play. And play is a method call, so you're going to give it round brackets, and in the round brackets, you need to name using a string, which has the double quotes, the name of the animation that we want to play, which is walk. So now if we press the right action, the arrow keys or A and D, we'll change our velocity and we'll play the sprite's animation called walk. Now it is possible to type in something incorrectly, like if I forgot and said walking, it wouldn't work. You got to make sure you know the names that you already gave your animations. Of course, you can go back into Steve scene and look, but I've got it right. So I'm going to copy this because we want to play the same animation for left. Don't worry yet about flipping over. We'll deal with that at the end of this video, but let's go ahead and see what we have. I'm going to press control S to save. I'll go back to my level one scene. I, I already am and I'll press play scene. And now if I press the right arrow key, hey, he walks and left he walks, but of course he's not flipped over. We'll deal with that in a moment. If I jump, he's still walking. In fact, if I don't press anything, he's still walking. We have to default if we're not pressing left or right back to idle. Let's go ahead and do that. What I'll do is we have two if statements here. If we're pressing left, if we're pressing right, great. But what if we're pressing nothing? What I can do here is I can use the keyword. I'm going to line up my cursor with these ifs. I can use the keyword else and else in programming essentially means the word otherwise in English. So otherwise, if we're not pressing right or if we're not pressing left, well, we want to do something else entirely that will be run. I'll put my colon at the end of that and press enter. This code will now run if these two if statements are not true. We have to fix one thing. But let's go ahead and say dollar sign sprite dot play and in round brackets because this is a method call i'm going to say idle okay but we have a problem and that is that we have to order if statements in a progression of priority that means the key press or the action that's going to take priority is the first if statement we'll say if we press right do those two things Otherwise, if that first if statement is not true, we need to try something else. But notice how I said otherwise, if this one isn't true, I can try the next one. We have what is called an else if statement as well. And this basically means that it will only check to see if you're pressing the left arrow key if you're not pressing right. And so now we kind of have a hierarchy here. It's going to try right and then otherwise check left and then otherwise if neither of those things are true then it'll do the idle animation but actually in other programming languages else if is very common in gd script they've shortened it for lazy coders like me it's just elif so elif is the keyword that's short for else if you kind of just have to get used to that and type it but it's actually nice because it's shorter so now we should have it working if i press the play scene button my game or my scene will load and now I should be able to walk left and right. And if I let go, hey, it'll stop walking. But if I jump, well, I can walk in midair and I could be idle in midair. And that's not what I want. I want to use that air pose of him kind of splayed out like he's in the middle of a jump or like he's falling with his arms up a little bit or out a little bit. So we're going to add a, another if statement below these ones that will override any of these poses. It won't override the action moving left or right, but it will change the pose if you're not on the floor. So I want to say if... And I'm going to say not, and then we're going to use that method is on floor. So I'll actually be lazy and copy that. If I'm not on the floor, I want to change the animation of my sprite. So I'm going to say sprite dot play, and we'll add the round brackets. And in there, I'm going to say air. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll give you a moment to get this code out on your screen. I'll make my workspace a bit bigger so you can see all of it, but I'll do a control S to save. And if I press play scene, we're in our level one scene, my character now falls. And when my character's in the air, he's in that nice jump pose. And if he lands and I don't do anything, he's idle and he can walk uh, when I press walk and all is pretty good. We're not gonna use the duck or crouch 
pose or the up and down ladder pose quite yet in this video, but let's fix that whole problem where he's not facing in the right direction. In code, I'm going to minimize this uh, workspace. In code, we can access, and I'm going to actually go into Steve's scene. In code, we can access any of the properties of any of the nodes in our scene. So my animated sprite actually has a property called flip H, and this means flip horizontal. And it's not turned on by default because my character is facing in the direction that the picture file actually is facing. It's not flipped. But if I check this, if I turn this on, it will flip over. And that's exactly what we're going to access with code. We're not going to flip our entire kinematic body 2D physics object, we're just going to flip the sprite that's a child of the kinematic body 2D object, and that will be good enough for us. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that, leave him at his default uh, orientation at the beginning, but I'll go back to level one and click on Steve's uh, script, and I'm going to go up to where we're pressing left and right. I'm going to add one more line, again, all lined up here. We're going to say, because we have to access the sprite again and change its flip horizontal property, we're going to say dollar sign sprite dot, and the property here, or the variable really, is called flip, and you'll see it there, flip underscore h. So I'll use my arrow keys, select that top one, press enter. What do we have to do here? Well, this is not a method call. We're not going to put round brackets. This is a variable. So we're going to assign it a value. It happens to be a variable that only accepts true or false, like that on or off checkbox that we saw a second ago. So I'm going to say false, because when we're pressing right, we don't want the character to flip around and face to the left because he's facing right by default. But if I select and highlight this code and copy it and go down to left and press enter and paste, I want to make sure he is flipped around or his sprites flip H is set to true when we press left. So this should work. If I do a quick control S on my keyboard, if you want to pause the video to get all this code, you can, but I'm going to press play scene. And now if I press left, hey, he faces left and right. And it just works. If I jump, if he's in the air, all of those different uh, animations, whether he's, you know, in his jump pose or he's falling or if he's idle, he can be flipped around. Okay, so that's it for making our character have different poses and a walk animation. It didn't take that much code. It just took us a little bit of time. That will be it for this video. Of course, if you like this video, if you learned something, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps me and my channel out. If you want to see more videos like this one in Godot or Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. It's the social media that I use the most outside of YouTube. But that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.